Hugh, I just want to remind you, you're going on a journey, a journey <sighs> through interviewing. All you have to do is follow my voice. Oh, I'm there. When the waters began to rise and war broke out, there wasn't a lot to look forward to. So people began looking back. How close can you get before the illusion's broken? I'm bowled over by not only this movie, but your performance as Nicholas Bannister, because he's a perfect noir protagonist, and that's so hard to come by. Uh, what sort of inspirations or hallmarks did you pull from to make that happen? Definitely Bogart. I watched a lot of that. I watched some some of his movies that I hadn't seen before. Um, but what I love about the movie is you think, like when I was reading it, I thought, oh, okay, this is sort of Bogart. And then, I, oh, we're into an action movie. Oh, no, it's a thriller. Oh, no, it's a romance. <laughs> Lisa Joy of Westworld fame, the writer-director of this movie, somehow has this understanding of genre, knows how to blend them, break them, put them back together again, and ultimately, I think, create a really poetic movie. I hope that doesn't scare people off, a poetic movie, <laughs> but I think it's really beautiful, ultimately. It's easier when you have Hugh Jackman, Rebecca Ferguson, and Tandaway, and this incredible crew to to make you look as good as possible with with, uh, with it. They all really hold down this, this beautiful genre, and I wanted to start by asking, where do you tend to start with plotting something like Reminiscence? I start almost always, despite the uh, complexity of some of the narratives and mystery, mystery points, I always start with emotion. It's the way that I find a connection and a desire to tell that story. So it really often starts with character and emotion. And around that, I will build the mystery. That's just another way to sort of call out the wonderful chemistry you have with Rebecca Ferguson, who you're having like this mini Greatest Showman reunion with. Uh, totally. Were you jealous at all that she got all the singing this time? <laughs> no, I was thrilled. Your turn. I, I've, I've done enough of that. Uh, it was, she was so good at it too. Like, A, you're a great singer, but very seductive while she does it. I'm literally just in my head is running through a really cheesy line because one film with Rebecca is never enough. <laughs> no, uh, sorry. I'm sorry, everybody. I really apologize for that. You heard but it. It's true. She is wickedly brilliant, wickedly funny, naughty. Very naughty. Oh. Any uh, any instances you care to share with us? Um, she just funny, sense of humor. Ah. Very, very biting. I, I highly recommend an interview with her and see if you can bring out that cheeky side of her. You come highly recommended by Hugh Jackman as a wickedly funny, biting, and naughty personality. So I am looking forward to We've this. We've set up this interview, haven't we? Wow. Yes, yes, we have. Failure. We we see that Nick thinks he knows May, and then through the film, we really come to know who she really is, and that's part of the beauty of the story is just memory versus reality. And the sad part of that is, I think, did she ever get? to the part where she was what she was, you know? Yeah, it's it's kind of a, a life unrealized to a certain extent. And yeah. that's just sort of the the tragic beauty of it. It's, it's beautiful. And then I get to play this intense character with a person like Hugh, who, like you said, so kindly said things about me. I mean, he is annoying, smelly, <laughs> just someone I'd rather not work with again, to be honest. No, he would created such a safe environment for me. To, to explore all of these characters. Um, he's absolutely amazing. He made the film so wonderfully fun to shoot. Nothing is more addictive than the past. No, 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 put me back, put me back. It's really a cool sort of reinvention of, you know, you have your embittered detective in Hugh Jackman's, you know, Nick, and then Watts is sort of the loyal partner that's sort of drawing the line and it's like, look, you really can't cross this because if you do, there's going to be trouble. And you just play this so brilliantly. Oh, thank you. I suppose it's the, vo the voice of reason, but also a slightly cynical voice of reason. Yeah, it's complicated, isn't it? As, as relationships are. Well, the results are absolutely thrilling, especially that amazing shootout you got to take part in. I know, in. I love that. It's oh. one of my, it's like, that's my new calling card. From now on, <laughs> I, that's what I want you to see if you want to know what I can do. That. I love the attitude. I loved 
the way it was shot, the choice of music. It was Lisa in her absolute prime. And if you had any idea of the crap we went through to try and make that scene happen, it would blow your mind. The fact that it's turned out the way it has is just, it included being shut down because of, because of an electrical storm. Literally the ceiling of this messed up old bar, because it was a proper location, water was cascading through the roof. We had to shut down for two, three hours. So we had a third of the day to shoot and we did it and we nailed it. And that's what you see on screen. Like it's unbelievable. And it's our first movie. Like it shouldn't have happened. I, I always thought that we'd have to go back and reshoot, but we didn't. And there it is. Unbelievable. Honestly, it's spectacular. My appetite for scope <laughs> increased by working on Westworld. I, I'm used to working in tight time frames and trying to make the most of the budget that you have to create a big world. And so I knew that even though it was an original and not, you know, a giant uh, franchise in that sense, I could hopefully make it look giant and feel giant by learn, uh, applying the lessons that I learned on Westworld. Now, you do work with a lot of, uh, a, quite a few of your collaborators from the show. Uh, Tendue is here. Uh, Raman Duwadi has this amazing score to this. But have you thought about maybe bringing Hugh Jackman or Rebecca Ferguson on board for a future season? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I would gladly work with them on anything and everything. And I will say that there will be a character, a new character from Reminiscence in Westworld. Um, but I also am eager to bring the people that I work with on Westworld to other features. And so all of those talks have already, I've already started scheming. We're, I'm scheming and, and cahooting with, uh, with the actors because I love them so much. <laughs> Stay here in this life. You've uh, previously said that you got to play a personality that you didn't think you'd get an opportunity to do so in Watts. And I was just wondering, what is it about the character that felt so unique to you? I think it was the fact that I wouldn't necessarily have assumed that a woman, a petite woman like myself, you know, could effectively be the support to this strong man also you know do i seem like someone who could have had a military history and i'd realized that i was internalizing a, a much more male-centered sort of view of women and if i actually really thought about it or looked on google for two seconds women in the military are rep, you know is every kind of woman in the military of course so why can't i fit in you know that description so once i once I released myself of that internalized bias, yeah, it was fantastic. And it was true in life in many ways. You know, Hugh and I got on incredibly well. We had so much in common, a great respect for one another. And, you know, in discussions about what, what life could have been like for the two people in, a, in that, you know, frontline situation, there was plenty of research and material to support both, you know, from both characters' points of view. So it ended up just being this incredibly liberating and expansive experience because I went from fearing the authenticity of someone like me in that, you know, uh, environment to realizing that it's absolutely, not only is it right, but I need to be more aware because there are women like me as sensitive as, you know, I, funnily enough, one of the things that really comes to mind is, is 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 hearing looking at interviews of very brave women talking about sexual abuse in the military you know and realizing that oh my god what they have to hide in order to just be allowed to be women in that environment what they have to suffer what they have to uh deny about their experience so they're even more like me because the only difference is they have to cover it up right so all of that was just the need to, de to, to deconstruct the stereotype of what kind of woman would, could, could, could go head to head with a man. That was a thrilling thing to be able to deconstruct with this character, with Lisa Joy on this movie. One of the wonderful things was when I had my initial phone call with Lisa Joy, we started talking about all of these layers of our own personas and our characters, because that's basically the gist of the film, isn't it? It's, 
who we are through the eyes of the beholder, you know, who you are to me is not the same as the next person you're going to meet, you know. We, and then we try and, and show another persona, you know, to, to satisfy what we think are the needs of the, of the responding person. So we, we, we would go into our own sort of memories of things we've done and, and think of moments when we were vulnerable and, and why we were and, and how we try to hide it and, and why we would try and hide it and what society asks of us. That's basically what the film is about, isn't it? Exactly. It brings all of those, as you mentioned, personal traits to this enigmatic, sort of elusive femme fatale, but it's basically just roles within roles within roles, isn't it? To find where she'd gone, I had to know where she'd been. You were recently spotted hanging out with director Sean Levy, who you previously worked with on Real Steel. Yeah. And that just begs the question, how many times are you asked about a Real Steel sequel? And are we any closer to it happening? By the way, recently quite a lot we're being asked about it because uh, during the pandemic apparently it was very very highly watched and it was, it was really a huge nice. netflix hit huge hit like 10 years after sean ramey said dude do you see what's happening and i said no i don't see anything that's happening but it, it's really nice to know that a movie which i, I really loved at the time and I, a lot of people come up to me in the street and tell me they love that movie lots of dads love it um and so it's really nice to see get us due. And it was just one of the most fun. Sean, working with Sean on anything is the best. And we m remain really good friends. You're going on a journey. All you have to do is follow my voice. <laughs> 